So, we're doing more Search of the Gold Bar today. Naturally, I, I thought I'd go over kind of a couple of things, too, that had kind of come up from time to time that I, I haven't really seen a whole lot of people talk about, which is that basically, out of all the different builds that you've probably seen on YouTube, right, what I, I think a lot of people don't really see <clears throat> a whole lot of discussion over is kind of the uh, fact that there's a lot of pay-to-win mechanics, right? It's... it's all right, so pretty much you just need to follow along, and this is going to pretty much show you how to get that 5% discount on your purchases in Legend of Mushrooms. This is all you pretty much need to do is just basically install Legend of Mushroom, and you, again, you have to have Aptoid's version of this, um, and then of course you need to have the AppCoin wallet as well. Again, these are both in the description down below, so you're more than welcome to take a look at these, come and download them. And then once you've actually downloaded them and installed them, then all you gotta do is basically open it up. And the AppCoin's wallet is basically a crypto app in a sense, but and it's really all you're gonna do is just go to the rewards tab, go to the promo codes tab, put in the promo code that I've got down in the description, which is Dakinoth LM, and then you'll be able to get your five percent extra bonus on the game, so you can save money playing the game. It's kind of a given, right? But if if you look around, most of these servers, they get built up quite a bit. And then basically it, it becomes kind of a naming game as to whether or not your server will die within the first week. And of course, the top 100 players typically are going to be sitting in the arena and just basically milking it, drive everything that they can get. Now, it's not to say that the game isn't fun, right? It's still a lot of fun, but it's just like, I feel like if, if you do intend to play this game and spend money in it, right? And you want to be one of the bigger, better players, you have to kind of go into it knowing that most if not all of the player base that you fight in your server is probably going to die off in the first week or two and then what remains is really just going to be kind of dependent on what alliances what family guilds are really present in your state because again it's it's not really kind of universal i've been in mine even though i'm kind of just like one of those i don't know i I'm a, i must be like one of those low bar players because i almost have hardly anybody bother me in mine but the one thing that I've I've kind of made less and less emphasis on, in case you're wondering, this is the current set that I'm using. I still think this is a better set, at least for our mage healer, because you'll get the shroom and the nature's renewal, uh, which I think is a good plus. You know, I also think that this time statue might be very helpful too. There's different benefits. It just it's tied to which skills you're using and how you plan to use them. You know, but I I think the energy statue makes sense to me, but. You know, just like anything, you know, you, you got to invest in it to really see where that's going to take you and what build is going to be better for you is just going to be really dependent on what skills you have and at what level. And obviously, if you're not spending like crazy amounts, then you're you're going to be playing this game kind of I've been playing, where you're just really just kind of enjoying it for what it is. And if you can get the loot you can get, then awesome. And if not, no big deal. And you don't stress the stuff that you don't have control over. I will say, though, for the last couple of days here, it's nice that they don't penalize you for being gone or like not actively grabbing those, by the way. That is really nice. Well, let's go ahead and do some heroic trial. I don't know. I, I feel like if, if you put any amount of thought into it, like the min-maxing and the builds that are out there, I, I've seen a lot of arrow builds and warrior builds that are crushing it. You know, the mage builds are doing okay, but I think we're we're all really kind of dependent depending and this i think is kind of the the long format is the late game a lot of the player base is depending on pay to win pieces that are being released to determine whether they're going to be the meta or the best possible you know, player in the game you know in a way i kind of feel like the mage build was kind of, it, it was it you don't really have a wrong answer and i kind of see why they say this because it's not like there's any one play style that's better than the other so much as it's it's just how they play and in a way i feel like that's partly true but also partly wrong and the, you know, even though some classes are going to have an advantage in the early game there's very much a clear favor of certain pieces right now for certain classes that it's like in a way i feel like you can argue one way or the other which one you'd rather do just based on what's available at that time you know and it's not like it's the end all end all either. It's like, and I'm sure that if you if you play it long enough, it's it's like one of those things where it, I don't know if it you know it, it all depends on whether if if it bothers you or not, right? I think that's really ultimately what it comes down to. If it bothers you, you probably are cranky about it all the time, 
And if it doesn't bother you, you probably don't even know about it. And that's just it. There's just two types of players in this game. I think you've got the casual, who cares, it's an idle game. It's just have fun and have enjoy making your character. Sooner or later, you'll get everything anyway, because you can just idle and play the game. And then there's the hardcore, like, I gotta be number one, and maxed out, day one, you know, try to be the best possible player in my server at that point in time. It's like, I don't know, between the two player play styles out there, I, I really don't think you have to stress it either way. I'm In my opinion, I think the casual players have it, right? Because in almost every way, you're just basically building up to a point where you know, unlock more and more stuff, and you you basically, you know, it's, it's just a time sink, really, if anything. I think out of a lot of the builds that I've seen out there, I will say that some of the skills that jump out to me, you know, I like Clone Strike. I want Clone Strike so bad, but I haven't got it yet. And then I also want Star Array. And then it'd be kind of cool to get like Crimson Moonfall or you know, some of these other skills that I see in here, like 100 Slashes. Those sound cool, but you know, just like any skill, you know, it's, it's not much different than the pets. You just have to wait until you unlock them. And of course, there's obviously better pets down the road, they just don't have access to yet. <laughs> and so, therein lies the problem. And I think that's kind of where you, you find yourself in this situation pretty frequently in this game. It's just kind of time sink and trying to get to the top. And you're always struggling to get there because it just takes forever and ever and ever and ever to get anywhere. And this is part of the reason why I feel like a lot of people spin. It's, it's like they hit a brick wall and then eventually they go, I'm going to just jump ahead and get ahead because why not? And, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just... I think out of all the things you could buy in this game that makes the most sense, a lot of people like buying like the, the starter helmet and the starter weapon, and that's fine. Like That'll obviously get you far ahead in the early like 0 to 50 stage pretty quickly. Like, that is undeniably probably a pretty good bang for your buck in this game. But I would argue that if you're actually going to be committed to playing the game over a long period of time, you get the ad skip. Out of all the things I've gotten, I honest to God think the ad skip is probably the most of it. For what I've gotten in value in relation to everything else, it is very clearly a much better option out of everything that's in here. And it's not even for the most obvious reason, right? It's it's the fact that I don't have to watch ads. And I don't know about you guys, but I hate ads to a certain extent <laughs> in games. It's, it's just in, it's irritating to have any kind of ad. Now, obviously, you know, if you're getting rewards for it, then it's like, that's kind of the argument for you. And it's like, well watch an ad, get a, get a reward, you know, they win, you win, and everybody wins, right? But it's just like, when comparing that to, like, any other game, it just, I don't know, man, it's, it's always a little, there's always a part of me that just, I don't know, I don't, I don't like it, but, you know, that's, that's advertising, right? It's kind of modern day dilemma that we find ourselves in, especially in modern gaming these days, especially in mobile gaming, though, you don't see it as much, but there's definitely a trend where games have really kind of developed a sense of, building their games around that idea where well it adds are fine as long as you can give a player a reward and a return but i also feel like that also still introduces an unnecessary barrier and, and i guess it just depends on where you are monetarily right but i feel like in a way if the exception to that rule i think is you know, in monetization of mobile games which are in my opinion almost heinous compared to any other game market out there. You look at like Fortnite and a lot of these major AAA games and they don't even know to the great extent that mobile games have gone to just not only make their games as fun as possible, but they've also made them last over a period of several years, in part because they constantly update them and add new content that they then expect money for. And they usually get in large quantities and often part of that is because it's kind of a rat race between the players that are currently trying to rank up and just kind of rinses and repeats the cycle of pay to win fantasies that people have always kind of subscribed to in playing these mobile games and it's not like there's anything wrong with that really it's just i don't know after a certain point it does get kind of old Growing up, you play a game like Halo 3 or Halo 1, 2, or any of the old Nintendo NDS, Pac-Man, you know, even those games, there were limitations to that. And I, I, you just don't see it as much these days where games are built around that in mind. And I don't know. Maybe this is just kind of the way gaming is these days, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm not really sure what where you guys stand on this, but I'm just curious if I'm the only one. I'm probably not, but I, I would like to think that there's surely there's got to be a better way to do that, you know? And it's like, 
advertising in games is, I guess, it's like good if it's if it's games that you possess, right? I've seen that happen with different games out there, but when it's used as a way to monetarily your mobile game revenue up, cringe, I just cringe at it a little bit. It makes me think that it's like, well, does the company have a hard time monetizing it already? <laughs> it's like, and then the question ends up becoming less about why it's being done and more like, well, well you know, it, what's the end goal? It's like, in many ways, I feel like this is, I think, more of a long-term simple solution to monetize even the free-to-play player base. You know, in a way, I just, I don't know. It rubs me the wrong way, in part because I feel like even the advertisers are getting screwed out of that. It's like, nobody really wins. You know, it's not, it doesn't really detract from your game in some ways, but in others it can. And, and I feel like if if I was in their shoes, I just wouldn't bother adding content that would support mechanisms that would detract away from my own player base from wanting to leave my own game because I allowed advertising involved in it. But, you know, to each their own. And, and after all, this is just an idle RPG anyways. Like, really, does it actually matter? No. In the grand scheme of things, I've I've had people compare this game to like Kingdom of Slime and I, I think like a couple of others. And I, I think that kind of gets into what a whole different discussion, which is that why are these all seem so similar? And, and I'm very, and we're not talking like well, just a little bit, no, a lot of it. Like the UI design for a lot of these games is very, very similar. In part because it works, but also because it, the likelihood that you know, one company out there made all of this by hand, designed all of it by hand, is so slim you know, these days. It's like, and very much so, it, it seems as though like you can almost kind of feel like the what, what's authentic is often the art and the design principles that go into it but the code base and the programming going behind these games is not often detracting a lot from it doesn't do anything unique you don't see it that often in the mobile gaming space in particular it doesn't really have a lot of that too often that's i think it makes sense in the sense that it's like that's what we call a genre right and then ultimately if a real-time strategy game feels like a real-time strategy game it's in part because the ui interface and the things that we've come to know just establishes that unique expression of how we get to understand and play the games. And does it actually mean that they're a carbon copy of each other? I don't know. I, I, I think it's flattering that some games seem to have almost had the like same developer work on all of their games in some fashion. And not to say that, you know, like, and this is not to say that this game is a carbon copy of any other game, right? I, I'm not even saying that. I'm just saying that it seems as though in games in general in the mobile space, you, you very quickly can pick up on games that feel as though they're very, very similar. <laughs> in some ways, so that it, it is kind of surprising that some games are almost too similar. But, you know, I guess that's ultimately for them to figure out and decide. It's not like I'm out here going around and you know, poking around in their code base by any means even though there has been a lot of instances where we've seen games where their app you know the game executables have been leaked or you know, there's a lot of that that goes on but even that doesn't seem to last in the grand scheme of things because of just how much content that they add in the art that they do it's a way it almost contributes to the game's development life cycle over the span of several years. And in some ways, you can kind of understand why, though. It's like if you really thought about it for any amount of time, you'd probably realize that a lot of these games are structurally built that way and just so that they're consistent. Because yeah, if, if it doesn't work, it doesn't pay. <laughs> and so in some ways, you don't see as much risks being taken. And that's, I guess, kind of just the way it is. And there's not really a whole lot that can be said about it yet. I don't know, on the same token. You now, with the event going on, solving the clues, obviously, you know, after a certain point, you get all the clues, right? You get all the extra clues, and it's like, ah, yes. Every 100 clue, you get a gift. Well, man, I gotta get a lot of clues before I'll ever actually see the light of day. And by the time I do, it ain't gonna last. It's kinda crummy. But, that's that, man. Ultimately, that's those are my thoughts for today. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time.